Path of Exile 2 is about a year away, but GGG has been leaving tantalizing hints for interested players. And recently, at PAX West, they sat down with Maxwell's very own Echo Hack for a short interview. Echo Hack asked Jonathan Rogers, a game director for Path of Exile 2, several questions about the upcoming title, and today I wanted to go through them and give some of my thoughts. If you want to know more about the full interview, I will link it down in the description below, as I'm going to be summarizing rather than reading all the points verbatim. And so the first question was about a difference in combat from Path of Exile 1 to Path of Exile 2. And Jonathan's reply was really interesting here, because he really stressed that their goal with Path of Exile 2's combat is to make it feel good. And this is something that he's elaborated on in other interviews as well, talking about how he wants Path of Exile 2 to play like an action game rather than an action RPG, which is an interesting distinction because in an action game, you can often go unga bunga and just smash the enemies without thinking. Whereas in an action RPG, you practically need to use EVE Online levels of spreadsheet knowledge to make a character that goes unga bunga and kills enemies without thinking. And so one thing that he quickly highlighted was you need to be able to respond to things on the screen, which means you aren't firing 500 projectiles per second, and it also means enemies aren't firing 500 projectiles per second. This is something we saw at ExileCon as well, where projectiles have physics and drop off. So you fire a projectile and by the end of a screen or towards the edge of your screen, it collides with the ground because it loses altitude. This guarantees that you won't be able to off-screen enemies and they won't be able to off-screen you, which I think is a perfectly fair trade-off. And something else that he talked about was the way they're using extremization to add interest or flavor to the game, which is something that we saw in Preach's gameplay at ExileCon, where he encountered one enemy that was totally normal, easy, crushed it, and the next one was pretty much an invulnerable raid boss. Extremization means you need different tools depending on the context. So one monster could have 10 times the health of another, or it could have 10 times the armor. Therefore, small hits won't be very effective, but a large hit that has some sort of armor penetration or negation would be. And this whole approach seems much more doable in Path of Exile 2 as opposed to Path of Exile 1. Because in Path of Exile 1, if something's immune to cold damage, well, your entire build does cold damage, your tree is set up for that, and you can't not do cold damage. But in Path of Exile 2, you can do cold and fire and set your tree up accordingly. So if something's immune to your primary cold skill, you simply switch to your primary fire skill. This alone makes combat much more interesting and engaging. Now, there may be some players who don't enjoy this, and it could be that there's going to be stats like fire immunity negation that will allow you to build a character in a very specific way to only deal one type of damage. Or it could be that you'll just say, all right, well, that monster lives. I'll leave him behind and clear the rest of the map, which is a perfectly valid response if you're ever struggling on an enemy. Personally, I really like the way in Path of Exile, you can build your character in extremely intricate and fine-tuned ways to do exactly what you want. But I also don't like how the combat feels very one-dimensional. I've often said it feels like I one-shot the entire screen or the entire screen one-shots me. And well, that was exactly Echo Hack's next question. What is GGG going to do to avoid the teleport screen wipe gameplay? And Jonathan elaborated to say, they're not specifically going to prevent that. But because of the extremization, one enemy is going to have a lot more health than another. One enemy might have a lot more damage than another. So if you're just going teleport screen wipe and three enemies on the screen survive, well, if you have no defenses, then those three enemies are probably going to wipe you. And similarly, this extremization and the fact that enemies can be immune is why mono element builds are probably looking weaker in Path of Exile 2, but because the game is designed around the weapon swaps and the versatility, I'm perfectly okay with that, and I'd actually like to see a little bit more information on what else they're doing to encourage using different things. Like, is there going to be an advantage to having a big two-handed hammer as one weapon set and then a sword and shield as the other? Maybe I have some nice defensive skills with really good mobility on my sword and shield, but my two-handed hammer is all about damage. So I'm zipping around the battlefield, you know, popping enemies left and right with my sword and shield setup, but then an enemy survives and my hits kind of bounce off its armor. I swap to a two-handed hammer and I go with some sort of armor break, absolutely smash it, do a full combo, it's slower animations, longer stuff, but I use that primarily on a single foe, telegraph bosses, etc. That would be really cool. I don't know if the system is going to be dynamic to that level, or if it's going to be like, I have arc and fireball, 
I use Fireball, and then Fireball doesn't kill something, so I swap to Arc, vice versa, etc. And when asked about the mono element problem, something else that Jonathan mentioned is a lot of games can be broken, uh, which is to say you come up with an overpowered build. In fact, there are entire YouTube channels like The Spiffing Brit dedicated to coming up with overpowered builds and breaking games. A Path of Exile is developed and played over a long period of time. That one of Chris Wilson's driving philosophies is always that Path of Exile is there for when you want to play it. And of course, that doesn't change the fact that players always want to break the game and you want to encourage players to feel like they're breaking the game, but you need to pay close attention to balance. And so the route they've gone in typical Path of Exile fashion is not to directly forbid you from making mono element builds, but encourage you to use multiple elements because it might not be efficient just to be mono element. And I like that, because if you're truly determined enough, I'm sure you're going to be able to make mono element builds work. And then the questions leading on for that also talked about optimization and how someone can say, oh, I've only played Path of Exile for 4,000 hours. The most important thing to come out of this, in my opinion, is the idea that yes, people are always going to optimize, but as game developers, GGG and anyone else has a responsibility to try to make the most efficient thing the most fun. Because if you're having fun, efficiency isn't an issue. Efficiency is only an issue when you're doing something you hate. A great example of this is sextant rolling. It kind of sucks. You're sitting there and you're clicking a thing in your inventory for hours and hours, but it's incredible money. You can just print mirrors by sextant rolling. And I know by saying this, I've probably caused the price of awakened sextants to go up by 10 chaos. You're welcome, or I'm sorry, depending on which side of a farming you're on. But um, that's not fun and it shouldn't really be as efficient as it is. And that's not to say there should only be one route towards efficiency. A lot of people would say blasting maps and killing monsters should be the most efficient way to play. Personally, I would say using crafting currencies should be the most efficient way to play, because crafting currencies are really fun. There's a lot of decision-making when you're crafting. Do I keep this item? Do I meta-craft it? Do I apply beast crafting? All those sort of decisions, and I absolutely love it. So providing different playstyles for different players is important. Uh, hopefully we can all agree that sextant rolling isn't fun, it's merely efficient. So by taking this into account, Jonathan and the team are designing Path of Exile 2 in such a way that the most efficient ways to play are also the most fun, and that's absolutely wonderful. Speaking of another difference from Path of Exile 1 to Path of Exile 2, in Path of Exile 1, a lot of players design their build around the movement skill. You're not a Tornado Shot build, you're a Lightning Warp build. You're not a Spark build, you're a Shield Charge build. But in Path of Exile 2, you're not going to design around your movement skill, because movement skills don't exist. Instead, movement's built into your regular skills. And in terms of making a game where the combat feels fluid to play, you're encouraged to interact with enemies in a meaningful way and carefully position, I can't think of a better way to do it. In Jonathan's answer to this question, he specifically talked about Rampage on the Druid, where you require rage, and maybe by default right now you have a little too much rage, making Druids a little bit more mobile than they should be, but you need some rage to move quickly. There's always a slight trade-off, just like how if you're using an attack that leaps you forwards, well, the trade-off is that you're leaping into danger because you want to hit the enemies with your attack. If you're using an attack that pushes you backwards, on one hand, you're getting out of danger, but on the other hand, if you want to progress through your map, you can't really use the skill unless you do some janky fire behind you stuff, which I certainly don't advise. Building movement into skills, which was especially showcased on the monk class, is really cool. And I think it's going to make the gameplay feel very different. And I think this is a big element of action games outside of ARPGs that was missing in ARPG design. Because if I think about a game like, let's say, Dark Souls, or Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor. A lot of the melee abilities do have movement aspects to them. You're not just swinging a sword, you're swinging a sword and taking a step forward. You're not just swinging a sword, you're swinging a sword and taking a step backwards or to the side, or you're rolling. Speaking of, the dodge roll in Path of Exile 2, absolutely awesome idea. It's gonna make combat so much more dynamic. All of these things lead to decision-making. You can use your attack to step through an enemy. You can get in trouble and overcommit. That happened to me quite a bit when I was trying different weapons in Lies of P. Some of the attacks did step me a little bit too much forwards or didn't step me forwards enough and I was just out of range of my target. Having all of these things to think about changes up the decision-making. 
And sure, maybe you just want a brain dead build where you hit one button, you don't look at enemies and all that. If you want that, you can absolutely still play Path of Exile 1. That's not changing. And I suspect players are going to find a way to optimize builds in Path of Exile 2 to get that same hit one button gameplay. Uh, from what I've heard from multiple people who played the Path of Exile 2 demo, that's kind of like what Huntress was. Or I guess it would be that, but you're playing a D2 Javazon in terms of Huntress. And I also think for a new player coming into Path of Exile, someone who's not thinking in spreadsheets, having movement built into your skills is going to make the game much more approachable and accessible because you can say, okay, I don't really understand all these resistances and this crafting stuff and all these things people keep telling me to do, but uh, I can hit the enemy and the enemy's health goes down and that's really fun. And I get to dodge for attacks and it's super exciting and awesome. The gameplay moment to moment is what's going to hook new players and bring them into Path of Exile and then they can get into all the spreadsheets and stuff. Next up, the discussion turned to locking out in Path of Exile 2, solo cell found concerns, and area resets. To go over the big difference, which was showcased at ExileCon, when you log out in Path of Exile 1, you get out of the instance. When you log out in Path of Exile 2, the world pauses around you, that instance freezes, and when you log back in, you'll be exactly where you left off. So if you are about to get hit by a big boss meteor, and you log back in, you are now about to get hit by that big boss meteor. If you accidentally disconnect, this is a good thing, because if you accidentally disconnect, hopefully you're not in any danger anyway, and you can simply log in and resume gameplay. But if you are trying to cheese and get out of danger of a logout macro, now you have to wait for the instance to time out. Overall, I do think this is a good thing, because the number of players who are helped by the fact that if they accidentally DC, they can get right back into the action without being punished, is going to outweigh the number of people who feel bad because they need to wait for their instance to time out because they are trying to choose something they shouldn't have been able to. There is the abuse case there, I fully acknowledge that, but overall, I'd put it as a positive. Furthermore, on death, the entire area full of monsters resets. It's a new instance, there are new monsters, but the terrain seed remains the same. So if you knew it was go left then up, you can still go left and up. But if there was that super scary rare that was giga fast and one shot you, well, in good news, he won't be there anymore. Instead, there's now two super scary rares that are giga fast and one-shot you. Enjoy! Now, one loophole was brought up, which is choosing with party play as you'll be able to resurrect your party members. However, overall, I think this is a good idea, and it kind of passively pushes players when they die to farm up a little bit, gain some more EXP, and level up. Because one thing I notice, especially among people like myself who are not very good at leveling in Path of Exile, if you're dying in a zone, you can just get to the boss and then Corpse Hall and move on to the next zone. And because you're still not prepared, you die again and Corpse Hall again. And it puts you in a loop of continually Corpse Hauling. And you will get through the story that way. Don't get me wrong, you can absolutely complete the campaign with 100 deaths, but it's generally a miserable experience. And remember, the most optimal way to play should be the most fun. I personally think that the most fun way to play is fighting enemies on a level where you're not constantly dying in Corpse Hauling. And so just subconsciously slowing players down by that little bit, putting more enemies in their way, teaching you little things as you go, should be a good way to encourage players to play both optimally and in a fun manner. I know in my own leveling, when I'm destroying the screen, I'm having a blast, and when I'm corpse hauling, I absolutely wanna go play something else. It was also called out that portaling out of boss fights in particular will be more difficult in Path of Exile 2 because there should be an opportunity cost to it rather than just a get out of jail free, head back to town and refill all your flask charges. Echo Hack then expressed a little concern that solo cell found might be more challenging because of this. And yes, that's absolutely the case, but as Jonathan talked about, it's another good way to teach players mechanics. So instead of starting Katava, not really learning what any of his skills do, getting one shot, fighting again, getting one shot, fighting again, getting one shot, fighting again, killing Katava, and thinking, oh, well, this game's bullshit. Everything just one shots me. You fight Katava, you get one shot by something, realize, oh, oh, it's it's the big circle on the ground that I stood in. And then you fight him again and you don't stand in that circle. You fight him, let's say a little longer and die to the giant breath attack and go, oh, oh, well, that's bad. Keep going, discover there's a safe spot on the side. Slowly but steadily, you are building mastery of that fight, and you can apply that mastery not only to Katava, but to all future bosses that use similar movesets. It kind of goes back to something that Chris Wilson said at the first ExileCon when he unveiled Path of Exile 2 and said, we want to kill players early and often. 
which uh, segues perfectly into Echo Hack's next question about difficulty, where Jonathan also echoed again that it's important to kill players early, where they get used to the idea that dying is fine. After all, if dying in a video game was in and of itself an objective problem, no one would play Elden Ring. So they plan to kill players an average of two times for every boss they fight. So by the time a player reaches endgame, they've died around 200 times. That way, when you reach endgame, a death isn't frustrating because it's not out of nowhere. You expect to die in a boss fight and learn it. And therefore, you're going to go into it with that learning mentality. Plus, you'll have 200 deaths worth of experience that you can bring up and use on future boss fights. So maybe after the first 100 deaths, you realize how most stuff works. And then you get to take that knowledge forwards and you absolutely crush some of the endgame bosses because those endgame bosses use the same mechanics as the story bosses. You get to apply the knowledge you've learned earlier, later on in the game. And with everything being telegraphed, you can just dodge roll out of the way. You can do boss fights, no hit style, if you're good enough. I really like this approach, and I think it's something that game developers shouldn't be afraid to do. Because when I play a lot of other ARPGs, be it Torchlight Infinite or even Diablo 4, the leveling process is so easy that death almost becomes insulting. How dare you kill me? You don't deserve to do that. Do you even know who I am? I'm the unkillable god that just murdered a thousand of your friends. And the reason you might feel that way is because the game hasn't set you up to accept failure. In fact, the game's done everything within its power to teach you that failure isn't an option. And when you teach players that failure isn't an option, they start to believe it. They think they're entitled to victory. Whereas if you teach players via the Dark Souls route that you are nothing and this game will crush you without a second thought, they think that they need to build up their skills to improve and that the enemies are scarier than you which leads to boss combat that feels challenging and fulfilling. You're excited to overcome the boss. It's not just a random loot pile that, oh, it didn't drop anything cool, I'm on to the next one. I beat that boss. That's exciting. I dodged everything. I didn't get hit. This was the first time I didn't die two times on a boss. And those exciting moments are really, really rewarding. It's why people play Souls-like games. It's not for everyone. I'll admit that. But if you're a sort of person that feels a deep sense of personal achievement from overcoming difficulty, I think you're really gonna love Path of Exile 2 based on what's been said so far. Then the topic of discussion changed to item acquisition, loot filtering, and trade. And so as you get towards the end game in Path of Exile 2, is item acquisition going to work similarly to the way it did in the demo, buying from vendors, or more like Path of Exile 1? And Jonathan said, fundamentally, it's not that different from Path of Exile 1. However, they've removed the quant stat and instead added the rarity stat. In other words, you're not going to get more items as you progress, you're going to get better items. Furthermore, in Path of Exile 2, rarity is going to apply to currency, so you're more likely to get a Mirror of Calandra if you have a lot of item rarity. And personally, I'm a really big fan of this change, because I don't like seeing garbage on the ground. I don't like that I have to filter loot out from the garbage, and sure, if it's just a lot of visual clutter, maybe some people like that, I don't. I would rather see less items, but make sure the items I'm seeing are more meaningful. Instead of it being a one in a thousand chance to be good and worth my time, it's a one in five chance. Even if that means that I see one tenth of the items I did before. Then Echohack asked if that would eliminate the need for a loot filter or simplifies it. And Jonathan said he doesn't believe it would eliminate the need for a loot filter, which makes sense, especially as the economy advances or you're more experienced and doing optimal farming, but that a new player will feel less pressured to use one and they could probably go with the game's default for a long part of their leveling experience. A larger percentage of the loot will be useful. Therefore, a larger portion of the loot is worth picking up and doesn't need to be hidden on a filter. They're also going back to basics and making sure that the portion of loot you get from League Mechanics is balanced around the portion of loot that you get from the regular game. To make sure things feel a little bit more proportional, and that you don't just want to fill your map with white monsters, you may actually want a few powerful, unique monsters due to their better drops. Rarity replacing Quant certainly is going to have a large factor here because a lot of those rare and unique monsters have massive rarity bonuses. And so it could be that putting one boss in your map is more valuable than putting 500 regular monsters in. Sure, the regular monsters will drop a lot more items, but the boss is way more likely to drop you a Mirror of Calandra something that could actually be a meaningful choice, and I really like that. 
And then on the topic of trade, no, they are not adding an auction house to Path of Exile 2. I know, I know, color me shocked. Um, they've been pretty consistent in saying they're not adding an auction house to Path of Exile. To quote a certain developer, this is very much a you think you do, but you don't moment. Everyone wants an auction house when they're seeing all the benefits. They don't want an auction house when they're seeing the downsides. Because the auction house opens up a whole other can of worms, players would absolutely abuse it. And at the end of the day, it's kind of cool to have to talk to people. I know that might sound weird, and sure, there's times when having to talk to people is annoying, but I've had some genuinely cool conversations with people that started because I was either selling them an item or buying an item from them. And hey, if you don't like talking to people, there's always SSF. And while he didn't go into specifics, Jonathan also hinted that there are a few quality of life features planned for Path of Exile 1. Most likely all of the economic quality of life features from PoE 1 are also gonna be in PoE 2. Then to close out the interview, Echo Hack talked about his own experiences playing Path of Exile 2, the pace of play, weapon swaps, and how it might appeal better to new players. Unfortunately, I personally haven't played Path of Exile 2 yet. I'd very much like to. But Echo Hack mentioned that it felt very different from PoE 1 or any other ARPG on the market. Jonathan mentioned that was the extremization at work, which is inspired more by action games like Final Fantasy 16. Okay, admittedly that one just came out, so not a direct inspiration. But let's go with Dark Souls, Elden Ring, Witcher 3, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor. Games like that where the action combat is very much front and center and everything else is secondary to it. He again brought up the idea that weapon swaps will help you deal with things, i.e. if your primary skill does cold and a monster is extremely cold resistant, well, you can swap weapons, use a fire weapon, and deal fire damage, completely negating that. They don't want to make weapon swaps strictly necessary. There are probably going to be ways like penetration to get around needing to weapon swap, but they want to make weapon swaps a thing you're generally encouraged to do. Another tool for your toolkit, especially because this is going to make the build meta for Path of Exile 2 far more diverse than Path of Exile 1. Think about it this way. Most builds in Path of Exile 1 are designed around one skill. So if your skill can't do excellent single target, clear the entire screen and be optimized, it's probably not going to see a lot of use. And I think this is a very big factor in why players say, oh, it's always the same skills over and over and over again. Those are the best at doing everything. But think of how many skills become viable when you don't have to do everything, when you only have to do one thing, when your skill can just clear the screen or just do single target, or just provide really nice utility and quality of life. This is the beauty of weapon swaps and weapons with their own skill trees, allowing you to weave in quality of life and secondary effects. And that's more than anything, the thing that excites me about Path of Exile 2. The way Buildcraft is changing, cause I love Buildcraft in Path of Exile and I can't wait to dive in. And then last up, the final question of the interview was Echo Hack asking Jonathan what they're doing to get new players interested in Path of Exile 2. What Jonathan said is, they just want to make it fun to play without having to worry about the complexity or depth. And that's why combat is so important. If a game feels great to play at a base level, you can just play it at a base level. Something like God of War is one of the examples he quoted. And then, as you play it, if you enjoy it, you can get into more of that depth and explore some of the other ideas. They also want to make sure that there's always more to do that you can explore more, and then after you've explored that build, there's something new, maybe a different league mechanic, maybe another build, maybe something that's even a little bit more efficient, but if it's not so much more efficient that it feels like everything they did before was worthless. And he feels like the combat in Path of Exile 1 isn't really good enough to hook players, and that's why a lot of new players don't really stick to the game unless a friend introduces them. That friend that gave you a tabula, or maybe made your build, is probably going to get you to play longer than if you were just going through yourself and you die to Brutus. And I have to agree with him. I don't really think Path of Exile 1's combat is engaging. In fact, I think it's quite boring. The aspect of a game that I enjoy is the economy, the build crafting, and the crafting. Things that are somewhat related to combat, but not the combat itself. Even boss fights. I'll fight them a couple times and think they're really cool. But if I'm farming them 50 or 100 times, it becomes about how little do I need to pay attention to the mechanics? How quickly can I damage this down? And can I make defenses strong enough that I don't have to engage with a fight at all? So I really look forward to a Path of Exile that I can play from the combat alone. Maybe that means the build craft suffers. 
Maybe that means there's not as much crafting, and maybe it means players don't engage as much with the economy. That's completely okay. I can play Path of Exile 1 for one thing, and Path of Exile 2 for another. But after this interview, personally, I was really excited to see what's coming, and I can't wait to learn more. So that was Echo Hack's interview with Jonathan Rogers. If you like this topic, then do be sure to get subscribed, because Riker also sat down with Jonathan Rogers and Chris Wilson for another interview, and I'll be covering that in an upcoming video. It was awesome that Jonathan took the time out of his day to sit down and do the interview, and if you want to check out more of Echo Hack's content, I'll be sure to link his YouTube down below. But now I'm curious, what do you think of Path of Exile 2? Are you excited for it, or are you a little hesitant? Do you think you'll maybe be sticking to Path of Exile 1? Personally, I really like the way they're solving some of Path of Exile's problems with Path of Exile 2 design. It's very rare that a game developer gets to start from a completely clean slate while maintaining so much of their game and its unique flavor. And so I really like that they're using the time to solve the biggest problem with Path of Exile 1, which is just how hard it is to get someone into the game. But I'm also curious about your thoughts, so do be sure to leave them below. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to see more interview content like this, do be sure to let me know. I'll uh, see what I can do about that. Oh, and uh, leave a like while you're down there, of course. But that's it for me today. Before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you can help make videos just like this possible. And for as low as $5 a month, you can see your name featured just like these fine folks here. If you're looking for more interview style content, then do be sure to check out the highlights from my recent interview with Sean and Ian from XD, the makers of Torchlight Infinite. And for more content about gaming and game design, check out my second channel, which will be linked down in the description. But with that said, thanks for watching, hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you again sometime soon.